Safety. And um, we're broadcasting this live from the Radisson Collection Strand Hotel in Stockholm, which isn't just a beautiful hotel in a fantastic location. It's also Safe Hotels certified. And what that means, we'll get into more in a few moments. Uh, the theme for today's conversation is traveler confidence, which is obviously something that's um, top of mind at the moment because of COVID-19. but. Uh, Confidence has always been an important part of travel and uh, obviously it's key to restarting travel and uh, once this pandemic is over, uh, it's still going to be a very important subject. Especially so when we come to, when we talk about business travelers, because when, when you travel for work, you need to be confident in the fact that your employer um, has taken reasonable precautions to protect you from harm, whether that be um, criminal activity uh, or indeed a virus. Uh, equally, if you're an employer or if you're representing an employer as a security manager, health and safety manager, uh, travel manager, HR or whatever, um, it's also important for you to know what are these reasonable precautions uh, as that forms the basis of the duty of care you have towards your, your employees. Uh, we at SafeTure, our mission is to help employers um, communicate actionable and trusted information to their people based on location. And most of the time that means informing them of events that have happened or will happen in, in a location where they are, where they're going to be, or in the context of COVID, uh, where they have been. Um, and so that's the main part of what we do, but we also want to provide trusted information uh, that can be used for planning, for example, planning a business trip. Uh, and for that reason, we've um, teamed up with Safe Hotels, which is a company that uh, provides independent verifications and, and audits of uh, hotel safety. Um, and this, this means that uh, safety clients will now be able to get uh, information about uh, Safe Hotels qualified uh, or certified hotels uh, at their destination. And also as, as a manager or as an admin, you'll be able to use this information as, as part of your planning. So for the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to be discussing hotel safety in the context of uh, traveler confidence. And uh, with me, I have Joachim, who is uh, the CEO of Safe Hotels. Welcome, Joachim. Thank you. And uh, I also have a representative from To Secure, which is one of our uh, longstanding partners. Uh, that's Dominic. Yeah, good day. Thanks for having me, gents. It's great to be here. Fantastic. And uh, last but certainly not least, we also have Andy Williams, also from Safe Hotels, who is uh, joining us from, from Istanbul. And I thought maybe you could um, provide a little context to the discussion, Andy, by explaining a little bit more about Safe Hotels and uh, how you do what you do. Yeah, thank you very much, Jens, and a uh, real pleasure to be on this webinar and we're really excited about the new partnership uh, with SafeTure and, and Too Secure, especially having Safe Hotels certified hotels on the SafeTure platform as an enhanced duty of care initiative when business travellers are looking for a hotel to stay at. Um, and that's quite a responsibility um, if you're going to be stating that uh, a hotel is safe. So that's, as you just mentioned, we just can spend a little bit of time uh, talking about this as, as the warm-up act to the uh, main event panel discussion. Um, I think it's always important to establish uh, a context um, first when, when we discuss any subject. So to understand hotel safety and security and, and travelers going there, you, you first need to understand the hotel business and how they're operated and managed. I know we have hoteliers on this uh, webinar and, and they're very familiar with that, but it's, it's very interesting, especially when I talk to people in the leisure and corporate world, their, their understanding of hotel business and how they operate. So for example, uh, there's many different types of hotels. There's business hotels, there's resort hotels, there's leisure hotels, conference hotels, brand chain hotels, independently operated hotels. Uh, hotels with thousands of rooms, hotels with a, a, a few, few number of rooms. Um, so it, it's important when you want to know first about safety and security in hotels to, to speak and know how to contact people with extensive experience uh, in, in the industry. 
not just having your own safety and, and security knowledge and information. One of the best people to speak to is, is a hotel general manager, for example, uh, the, the, the best relations that you can build up in, in terms of that to understand the business first. Because uh, this is very important in terms of uh, when we talk about how hotels and hotel company allocate resources uh, for safety and security in, in their hotels and how they actually undertake their own duty of care. So one of the first things I do when I actually go into a hotel um, is we enter through the front of house. But what you know is in the back of house, what's behind the scenes or in, in the hotel world, hoteliers will, will call it the, the harder house. How healthy is, is and strong is, the, is their heart. Um, so rather than um, going, some people may say go straight to the bar or, or, or straight to my room to check in, um, then uh, take a look if you can back a house. So have a look in what is actually happening uh, in terms of, uh, for example, what does their staff canteen look like? What do their locker rooms look like? So these, these are little details, uh, which we're just covering a little bit more, uh, that you can find out about how, how hotels operate and run, run as businesses. In terms of uh, the different types of hotels, within hotel types, there are even more types. So, for example, we have luxury um, hotels. We have different star ratings of hotels, two star up to five star. Now, interesting, you could say, well, what is the duty of care for a two-star hotel and uh, against a five-star hotel? A lot of it comes down to expectation of the guests and the different types of services you expect. So a two-star hotel may just be functional, um, that you just want a bed to stay in. You want somewhere comfortable. With a five-star hotel, you want different types of amenities. Uh, you want different types of restaurants, different other types of services. You're going to see a lot, lot more staff in the hotel. A typical five-star hotel will have over 100 staff or, or more in the hotel. Some hotels will go up to 800 staff. It's not uncommon if they have competent banking facilities as well. So one of the key things in the context is actually then how hotels operate. So and a managed. An owner-operated hotel is if I go out and buy a hotel and I decide to operate it myself. Uh, which is okay in a single uh, basis or, or a local basis. But big brands that we know, they don't actually generally own all their hotels. They may own some, but they will operate them through franchises or through management contracts with uh, local owners uh, or owning companies. So that's very important when we talked about how they actually allocate budgets as well <coughs> for safety and security. So if they... Uh, a hotel has a franchise agreement and the franchise agreement says that they have to uh, maintain their own standards of safety and security based on local order. You could be staying at a hotel that you see as has an international brand for the actual service of the hotel, but then maybe you don't actually know or, or realize that it's operating locally to local standards as opposed to international standards where safety and security are concerned. That's not to say that, that a franchise has, uh, has less or more, uh, uh, but it's just important to understand that from, from a context point of view. So when we have all these different variables, all these different types of hotels, we also have different types of hotel security standards. They may differ between different brands, uh, international chains, local chains. So how do we actually find a constant and consistent thread uh, for duty of care purposes? What I found is that um, it's very, very unusual to even find uh, a national standard for security in hotels. And when, when we say security, we're talking about things like crime prevention, et cetera, and, and, and crime rather than actual the safety. Uh, I can only think of somewhere like Dubai, uh, where, for example, they actually, by law, have uh, security standards that are actually checked by um, departments of the uh, police inspectorate each year. Uh, for, for security, much as you would be used to checking for, for uh, fire safety. So I would say out of all the variables, security is the main variable. Uh, fire safety, um, that can tend to be in terms of um, uh, international standards uh, such as NFPI, uh, which is a USA standard. But interestingly, 
If you go to the USA, and many of you will have traveled there, you'll see that different states have different codes. So, for example, last time I was in Chicago, the, the hotels there, you're not allowed fire extinguishers or uh, smoke detectors in the hotel rooms. You, you may go a couple of blocks down and it'll change into a different state and then you have to. So again, lots and lots of different variables. Where we sometimes see some consistencies in hotels are, uh, which is happening more and more, things like data compliance. Uh, so you're familiar with GDPR, which is more of an EU legislation, but crossing borders, things like GDPR data compliance. If you come across things like PCI compliance, that's Payment Card Industry Act, to protect your actual credit card and your credit data, uh, these are things which you'll actually see globally, local and international standards, uh, some of them actually internationally legally in enforceable. But again, the variables come in. So examples of, let's say, individual fragmented different approaches to hotel duty of care standards are, as I mentioned before, fire safety. You may have NFPI, US standards, EU, UK standards. You, you see a lot of places. Health and safety standards. You may have a local health and safety standard, uh, which is civil law. Uh, you may have, uh, I'm from the UK, where, where it's criminal law. So there's different emphasis on actually how that's applied. Uh, you may have heard of someone like OSHA, which uh, covers the USA, but then that mainly focuses on employee safety. Is there anything called guest uh, health and safety? So this also extends into uh, COVID-19 as well. So we see different, different approaches and standards, but uh, we have WHO guidelines uh, that will go through that. Many people ask, well, what about ISO standards? Do they apply to hotels? when actually ISO is a management process, it's applicable to all industries. So if you have an, uh, an ISO guideline, there, there are ISO guidelines coming out on travel safety, uh, which is uh, under review at the moment, which uh, will have a small hotel component. Um, but again, <clears throat> once, once we look into, in terms of is there a consistency uh, and can you find a consistency? Well, yes, it is possible to do. So what we did in Safe Hotels, uh, through, through our experience of, of working globally, and most importantly, uh, the, the foundation of hotels is that we're actual hoteliers ourselves. So we, we have experience in safety and security in travel, but we know and have operated and worked in and managed hotels at, at a, a site level and a, and a corporate level. And um, what we did was that uh, we, we took, uh, and literally on a, on a huge, great big table, and it took us about a week, we, we, we put out all those standards, all those different variable fire standards, all, all those different variable security standards, safety standards, uh, et cetera, uh, crisis management standards, uh, policies, procedures from different uh, companies and um, hotel companies as well. And then we look for all the consistencies. Uh, and you can actually find a lot of consistencies that will give you at least a base minimum level of standard. Um, and then what we dis did when we discovered those consistencies, we made them mandatory. So we said that these are the actual minimum requirements. There were some areas where we decided that there would be some variables. And of course, that will go down on what, what, what the actual local standard is. So by having the actual basis of a um, standard that is uh, a platform that you've actually got consistencies globally, whether it's a two star hotel, whether it's a five-star luxury hotel, whether it's a resort or a business hotel, you can then build into that in, into more detail and more granular detail. So in the end, what we came up with was six main sections of a standard. The most important one is the actual hotel walkthrough. Uh, so we're actually going from the roof of the hotel, down through the guest bedroom floors, down to the guest corridors, down to the meeting room space, through the restaurants, through, through the gym, et cetera, through the swimming pool if they have one, through the car park, through the basement. Uh, we actually make our people stay when our auditors go and actually stay in the hotel to actually, actually use the facilities uh, them, themselves and experience them. Uh, so it, it's not as much as we can do appreciating travel restrictions as they are a, a remote based. It's actually a, a, a go, go, do, try, see, feel, touch observe um, type of uh, standard. 
And again, that understanding of granular detail is vital for duty of care at this level in hotels, uh, especially now. We've, we've seen plenty of surveys coming out. And interesting, I was just reading uh, an article waiting before we're doing this webinar from, from McKinsey, which uh, is talking about the future of, of hotels and what are people's main priorities. So the main priority for a hotel now uh, apparently is, uh, unsurprisingly, is, is how clean is, is my hotel room, the room I'm actually staying in. So the other amenities that normally go with a hotel stay have dropped down. It's, it's that functional thing. If I'm going to have confidence to travel, then I'll travel, but I want to make sure my hotel is clean. So when we talk about uh, duty of care, we can also split it into two areas. And um, this is also where independent standards come, come into the fore. So we have day-to-day -day duty of care issues in the hotel. So irrespective of whether it's a pandemic or not a pandemic, and I know those of us in the industry have, have been through a few anyway. I, I distinctly remember uh, dealing with SARS back in 2003, and then we had H1N, swine flu, you name it, bird flu. But day-to-day, -day in if you're staying in a hotel, the issues were with things like uh, potential theft, cybersecurity, lost and found property, uh, food poisoning issues, uh, other types of uh, communicable uh, diseases, um, bed bugs, you, you name it. These are the main, main, main key areas that we've got to be looking at on a day-to-day -day duty of care program. It's also something which we also factor into, into our program as, as well. Uh, on the crisis management side as well, um, what is what is really interesting and, and going back we're in the COVID world is is how duty of care can go straight immediately in, into the media social media a good example i'll give uh, when i was working in hotels I, I dealt with the first ever sars case in in the uk when when sars was uh, uh considered uh, at the time as as the COVID. sars is a COVID, and uh, what happened was an international traveller had, had stayed at a hotel in, in Heathrow, I won't say which one, uh, in London, and uh, was, was actually carrying SARS at the time, met another business person in the hotel, uh, infected that person who was a UK citizen, and uh, <clears throat> I was in charge of a, a hotel company at the time, uh, got the call to say that there was an infected SARS case in the hotel. Now, what was interesting, that hotel had 500 uh, rooms they were all 100 percent occupied it was a friday evening uh, but back in those days you you could actually have media moratoriums so with our pr people we we spoke to people uh with the the uk health protection authorities uh with the uh news media people like the bbc and we were actually given a window of about six six hours to investigate what had actually happened and to find out where that person had been in contact and traced with. And we were managed to actually discover the, the whole route that the person had taken to, the, the, the cleaners, the housekeeping, the staff that they came in, in, in contact with. And back then we actually, unbelievably, the effective means of communicating to a guest so that they didn't wake up in the morning and actually see the news to say they were staying in, in a hotel if, uh, which had a SARS case was uh, to put a, a message on their TV screen so that they notice it when they woke up. And we actually put a letter underneath the guest room door uh, so that they could open and say that there was nothing to worry about. <clears throat> of course, these days, what would happen is that um, instead of uh, there being a, a media uh, window of a few hours, the media would be calling for them to say, are you staying at that hotel right now? Um, are you a are you are you a guest in the hotel? Have you got SARS? Have you got COVID? So this this is the biggest difference we're, that we're working in. So, in terms of when we're looking at hotel standards, in terms of um, crisis management, managing the media is a, is a key factor uh, as well now. So the day to day issues and what I just touched on there was what we call a low probability, high impact event. We we all thought that pandemics would be. Um, something that would maybe come and go with something we've got to now live at. But as travel will return, and, and it is returning, and we're seeing that globally as well, um, we still have the other issues to be concerned of, uh, especially if you have hotels or you have travellers in, in high threat environments, um, such as uh, areas of terrorist attacks, civil disorders, uh, natural disaster. 
So the key thing is to 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 keep the eye your eye on the ball as with these issues as well. Uh, don't get too over COVID focus. So to conclude that safety and security is now the number one decider in booking a hotel for duty of care, corporate travel and, and leisure programs and, and hygiene within safety and security is, is up there at the top. Certification has emerged as a way to help hotels communicate so they have globally consistent, independently verified safety and security standards in place. So yes, uh, hotels uh, will have uh, good standards. The, the international chains, the brand chains, local chains to a company are going to have good standards in place, um, no doubt about it. But what we're looking for, we're living in a world now where people need more trust and confidence in enhanced duty of care. And from our perspective, the only way that that can come through is through independent standards, uh, certification and verification. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Andy. Uh, Andy. Uh, I'm sure, I'm there's, sure already, there's already uh, many, uh, a lot of questions and if you're listening into the webinar just type them into the chat uh, we might not be able to um, answer all of them um, but we'll get to it and we're going to send out a recording of the webinar afterwards and, and we'll, we'll get to all the questions and provide you with a reply so all questions will be answered but um, let me turn to you first Joachim and just sort of bring it back from the nitty-gritty and up to, to, to the main theme confidence what why is it so why confidence now why is it so important i think uh, confidence has always been important but but the the pandemic has now put a spotlight on the issue uh, even more and and to get people back to travel we need confidence otherwise we we can't open up the business yet yeah. and don your you, your job at two secure is, is mm to dealing with travel risk management and then yeah. uh, how do you build this confidence? How do you, yeah, I, th I think it come from, yeah, I think it's really important. And I, I think you're right. You're talking about building confidence, but what we, we don't even talk about confidence. We just talk about the facts. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important. We work with private individuals, big businesses, small businesses, um, with interests internationally and personnel traveling overseas. And we always work with them. And when we're working with a client, we always talk about just giving them all the facts. And with the facts, people can make informed consent. Um, and then with the facts, we don't just present that bleak picture about these are the risks, but also mm. about things can be mitigated. Um, you know, I was in Syria last year. I was in Yemen as well. Um, we can operate. We can visit um, countries that are generally considered off limits and we can be safe, but we need to have the mitigation. So by presenting that, um, and whether it's about the hotels, whether it's about how to mitigate um, uh, unforeseen events, whether it's the COVID and the airlines, you know, it's a matter of having the facts and being able to mitigate them. Yeah. What about the hotel? Are they good at providing these facts? Are they good at reassuring their guests? Yes and no. I think that there's a study where 47% where of the guests are expecting more mm. and think that, that the hotel should provide more. And I think one of, out of 10 thinks it's not sufficient. They should mm. provide more. So. So information is, is, is a factor here that is not uh, fulfilled uh, yeah. every time. Mm. Do you know any particularly bad examples <laughs> you want to share with us? You don't have to share the hotel names. But... Uh, regarding information or? Poor communication and poor, poor sort of. No, uh, poor communication is no communication, I think. And it's, it's uh, I have seen hotels that has fantastic regimes in place, mm. but they are not communicating that. Nice. So they keep that for themselves. And also I have seen hotels that that has bad regimes in place or no regimes in place at all, uh, but they are saying that they have. Mm. Uh, and and I think there was this, this because, because the, the travelers are expecting that it is, uh, I think 73% are expecting uh, enhanced proce procedures when it comes to cleaning. 66% are expecting... Uh, uh, that there is social distancing throughout the whole property. Mm. Uh, Sixty-four percent is uh, expecting that that uh, the staff is uh, wearing a face mask, and fifty-eight percent is is expecting that that um, the the check-in is contactless. And of course, the the hotel says we we are fulfilling requirements, but when the travelers has specific requirements they need mm. to do, know what requirements they are fulfilling yeah. 
and and that's part of the communication i think that needs to be out there mm. yeah i guess it's difficult kind of as a i was just thinking when i heard andy explain all those things coming from the background not really being an expert in, in hotel security it's kind of hard to i mean what are you supposed to what are you supposed to look for and what are the questions you're supposed to and even if you're a security professional if you're a generic security professional mm -hmm. and i don't know how a hotel is run so i don't really know what to mm. what to look for i mean we, we always start from a very systematic point of view and, and you know what i advise um, our clients if they're the people traveling overseas or, or their personnel are traveling overseas is to really follow a, a common step by step and that means from when you leave your house what are you going to do you're going to get in a taxi Find out what the, who the taxi company is. Find out what their cleaning standards are. Then you're going to go through the airport. Find out what the standards are at the airport. Are people allowing masks? Have you got your own hand sanitizer? Um, you know, when you get on the plane, you know, a lot of people are expecting there to be greater distances on planes, um, as in in between people. But we're finding that a lot of flights are back to full capacity, uh, and you'll be sitting in a row of um, seven or eight people, depending on the size of the airplane. Um, so again, it comes back to facts, and we talk about getting the confidence of, of employees and employers to be sending staff overseas. Um, mm. But that can get shocked from the moment the, the staff member gets on a plane and finds out that their expectations mm. are not met. So, you know, following it, what's what's the next stage? What's the next stage? And again, as you said, Joachim, people have high expectations. 58% are expecting go to contact us check-in. If staff are expecting that and they get to the hotel and it's not contactless check-in, mm there's a problem straight away. And, you know, people's expectations are eroded. And before they've even had their first business meeting, you know, people are already upset because they've had 10 expectations that haven't been met. So it's really important to collect that information. And, you know, safe cheer has it, safe hotel, and, you know, too secure obviously works with our clients to collect that information. So that, that understanding the reality is so important. I think there there is some questions you, that you need to ask yourself as a traveler or, or as a uh, corporate buyer for tra traveler uh, 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 that is 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 what are the requirements mm. and how has the hotel verified the requirements mm. and who has provided the the the, the requ requirements or who, who has verified the requirements because that that's will will um, affect your, your trust a lot mm. how it's verified yeah. because we, we have seen a lot where where I was working in a big corporate before, and, and when we bought travels, we were sending out RFPs and asking the hotels uh, for regarding security, do you have this and this and this in place? And every hotel, no exceptions, were saying yes, 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 yeah. because otherwise they wouldn't get the contract. Mm -hmm. so, and we can't always rely on the hotel uh, yeah. answers. So, so it's, um, it's all about trust and who has verified, I think. Yeah, and and in your case, it's it's sort of an independent third party verification, which is which yeah is for us and for for NLs like us. It's yeah. it's I, I think uh, we should not only promote us because there are good companies besides us that mm -hmm. that that verifies and and audit hotels, and they they should be acknowledged as well. Uh, but but I think it's an important part of the business that we have someone that verifies hotels, which is an independent party mm. that has no financial interest in the hotel yeah. and, and work together with the hotel as well as, as, as the hotel's clients. Mm. If we can get that to work more, more on a more global scale for yeah. every hotel and for every corporate, I think we have reached very far when it comes to building trust in the industry mm -hmm. yeah. and to be able to open up the industry even more. Yeah. And yeah, we're, as expected, we're getting a lot of questions in. Uh, I'll try to get some of them in before we have to, to end. But uh, I mean, from your, people are asking, well, what makes your people qualified to, to audit hotels? My people, I, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm very proud of my people. And as Andy said, we are a hotel year. So, uh, ex yeah. All our our auditors has worked within a hotel, but they also have the other leg to stand on, and that's security, and that's that's on a very high professional basis. Mm. That they are uh, their their experience is, is quite unique because we have this mix that we require both hotelier experience and and security experience, mm. and we have been auditing hotels since two thousand and one. So I think that that talks for itself. No, that is certainly a long time. How, how, how does it? I mean, Andy 
sort of touched on it, but when you go to a hotel, is it when 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 Andy shows up, is he? Uh, do they know he's coming, or how does it work? Oh, we don't like do the, the restaurant. No, we don't do the mystery <laughs> shopping thing. We 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 are very transparent, uh, but we we check in as a guest. So we do everything from the beginning from a from a guest perspective. So we check in as a guest. And look at all the procedures a guest a guest goes through, and and uh, when when entering the room, we start to audit directly, mm. and the next day the audit starts. But actually, it, it did start just Before then. when we mm. checked in. Yeah. It looks like we're actually coming towards the end here. It's uh, twenty two uh, to four. Um, thanks for for joining this webinar. Time flies when you're you're having fun. As I said, uh, all the questions that you've been asking here in the chat, we're, we're, we're going to get to them and we'll, we'll send them out together with a, a, um, a recording of, of the webinar. And if you have any further questions, I mean, for SafeShare through myself or for your Kim and Safe Hotels or, or to secure uh, and Dominic, just um, contact us and uh, we'll be happy to, to tell you more. Safety, the world's leading employee safety platform.